All right, let's do some advanced select and debugging here in part three. Uh, we're going to start again with an empty database model. I'll go to the Server Explorer, which is attached to um, my Northwinds database on SQL Server. And you saw me drag a few of these out in the previous video. Let's do it again. We'll take products and their categories, but now I'll bring in orders and the order details, which is the one-to-many, I'm sorry, the many-to-many -many relationship between products and orders. And I'll just do some renaming. I don't like that underscore. Um, and just in case I forgot to show it previously, let's bring the stored procedure I just wrote called get products by category. I can bring that into my data model just by dragging and dropping. And there it is, my methods. Okay. So we now have a data model that's a bit more robust with four, four different entities and a stored procedure. Let's go write a simple query to deal with that. So I'll start with my default page. And let's view the source code for that. Okay, here inside the page load code, let's create a new instance of my data context. And just to make sure everything's wired up correctly, I like to do a simple select statement. I didn't talk about this much before, but this data grid view, sorry. Wait, did I add a grid view? Let me go back and add that. Uh, this grid view, like all ASP.NET server controls, it supports the um, ienumerable interface for data binding. And conveniently enough, this products, um, what link returns here inside products does indeed support ienumerable. That's what allows us to take the grid view and set its data source equal to products. Data bind. Okay. I've done this a few times. Let's just make sure this version's working. And we should get a select statement with everything in it. Okay. So as before, where I can filter down where the where the category category name equals beverages. I'd like to show you what's actually going on behind the scenes in this query because if you recall this products is related to category through a relationship which is inferred when we did the drag and dropping because of the database schema there's a foreign key on category ID to the category table. So if you know SQL you know what it has to happen. It has to be a join behind the scenes and indeed that so if you know SQL, you know that there has to be a, a join behind the scenes, and that is what's happening. Let me set a breakpoint here and run it. Oops, forgot my equals. Too much switching between VB.NET and C Sharp. Okay, so here's a breakpoint. If we step over it, you'll see that the products variable equals this big select statement. Now it's kind of hard to parse in that one line. That's why we have this little debugger visualizer. So I can click on that and see here's the select statement. In fact the original query even passes in the beverages string as a parameterized, it's a parameterized query so it's passing it in as p0. Um, this is really good for protecting against SQL injection attacks. But you can see that we have a select statement and there is our outer join mapping the category table to the products. In fact, we can execute this right here and see the results. Very handy. So I'll continue on. Good. Okay, let's do something a bit more interesting with the return value here. Um, we've got all the all the products coming back from. Uh, let me change this. Let's let's get all the products where there are at least at least. Oh, not concat count at least uh, three or more orders and for each product and then we'll select ah, this is annoying let's uh, disable that for a minute and let's select um, we're, we're creating an anonymous type that uses object initialization that allows me to do things like this so we have the product ID, we'll get the name We'll get the number of orders, and we'll call we'll get that from the order details count. Uh, I should spell that correctly. And finally, we'll get the revenue, also from the order details. But this time, we'll sum up 
using a lambda function by taking the unit price and multiplying that times the quantity. So something a little more interesting. And let's run it, see what it looks like. Okay. Now if we set a breakpoint, let's enable this back and run it. You'll see that this query is a bit more complex. You can see that we have an, um, an inner join right here. Uh, I'm sorry. We have an inner query that allows us to multiply the, um, the unit price times the quantity. And actually, you know, looking at this code, it's, it's pretty clean. And this is probably what we'd write in straightforward SQL. Um, again, I, so far, I think the code that Link has been generating has been, been pretty good and clean and easily just as fast as what you would expect. If you wrote it yourself, the, the, what the difference is, the fact is the, the counting and the summing is being done on the on SQL Server rather than in your code. So this should be this would be quite a bit faster than if you had to write it all by hand and do it on the uh, client side. Okay, now that query returned a lot of data. Let's uh, use another feature of Link that allows us to do paging. It's very common in web scenarios to page or limit the amount of data you see at once and say see ten rows at a time. And the way we would do that, let me let me set something up. I'll set the um, I'll set the starting row equal to a variable. Let's say it's zero. Then if I parameterize that and then go down here right after the query, I'll tell the products to skip to the starting row and take just the next 10 results. And by parameterizing that, I'll refactor this. Well, let's see. Getting tricky here with refactoring. So if I just take this to here and refactor that into a new method called bind products, it'll take a starting row. Um, and then when the page loads, what I'll do, I'll get the starting row from the query string. So to int 32. And I'll just call it start row. Ah, just row. Okay, so we'll get our starting row, pass it to bind products, and that is parameterized. Okay, that, that should work fine. So if I pass in row equal 20, you can see I get the next set of results, row 50. So now we have efficient server-side paging as well. So you've seen a bit of debugging. We've seen some advanced query shaping and been able to verify that the SQL generates is pretty clean. And finally, the skip and take features allow us to enable server-side paging. I'm Scott Stanfield with Vertigo Software, and I hope you enjoyed this video.